Please be advised, all music tracks used in this production are sole property of Kelson Communications and are original compositions. Thank you. To everyone tuning in, welcome. This is Silas, your e-journalism social work advocate. You're listening to the Kelson on the Air Social Work Podcast, the program that promotes, celebrates, uplifts, and highlights the social work profession. This podcast aims to educate the general public to the vital contributions professional social workers make in every aspect of society every day. Hello, everyone. This is Silas, your e-journalism social work advocate, host of the award-winning Kelson on the Air social work podcast produced by Kelson Communications Incorporated. Last year, in October of 2020, I had the honor and privilege of being one of 15 social workers chosen nationally as the 2020-2021 Network for Social Work Management Policy Fellow. It was a 10-month research program culmination was a final presentation of each fellow's research findings. Due to my involvement in media and journalism, my mentor, Dr. Catherine Breyer Lawson, Dean Emeritus and Professor of the Albany State University School of Social Welfare in Albany, New York, suggested that I do a documentary-style presentation. I was fortunate enough to interview via Zoom Dr. Breyer Lawson and five other distinguished and highly knowledgeable social work professionals for my presentation. My most memorable and impactful of all these interviews was with Mr. Dalton Murchison, one of my former social workers and my most influential one. I was able to reconnect with him after many, many years to participate in this documentary series. I dedicate this series in his memory and his honor as he passed away one month to the day that I featured him in my final presentation. The series is entitled, Raise the Wage, the Case for Equitable Pay for Social Workers and Other Human Service Professionals. Up next will be my final presentation, which was shared nationally on June 18, 2021. This is also going to serve as the trailer to introduce the full-length versions of each individual interview in this series. These interviews will be available in video format on my YouTube channel, and in audio on my podcast platforms. As you watch and listen, please share, download, comment, and subscribe. Also, as a registered 501c3 not-for-profit organization, please consider donating on my Anchor podcast platform. All donations are tax-deductible, and your support would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Good morning and welcome to Day 2 of the Network for Social Work Management Policy Fellows Program Virtual Presentation. My name is Rain Art Couch, and I'm a co-administrator for the Policy Fellows Program. And on behalf of everyone here at the Network for Social Work Management, we are pleased to welcome you to day two of our webinars, highlighting the work of our truly phenomenal class of 2020 and 2021 Policy Fellows. We'd love to learn a little more about you, so please enter your names and where you're coming from in the chat, Uh, or I guess you don't have to put your name, excuse me, Um, but just a tip, please be sure to select all panelists and attendees so that everyone can engage in your conversation. And while you're doing that, I'd like to kick things off by introducing Dr. Lakia Cherry, CEO of the Network for Social Work Management, to provide the day's opening remarks. Lakia? Thank you, Rain. Hello everyone, welcome to day two. Hopefully you had an opportunity to join us for day one, but if not, I encourage you to go back and watch the video. As Rain mentioned, I am the CEO of the Network for Social Work Management, and this Policy Fellows Program has been around for well over um, five years. Um, Within the last five years, we've had an opportunity to have over 50 fellows from throughout the country experience this program. Um, Before we get started, I want to acknowledge that tomorrow is Juneteenth. Many of you have today off, so we're so pleased that you've decided to use your day off to join us and to support our fellows. Tomorrow, um, for Juneteenth, we encourage you to reflect back on the history of our country, um, to continue to educate yourself, and to be intentional with making plans moving forward to figure out what you can do to do your part to rebuild and recreate a country that we can all 
be proud of. So with that, I wanted to congratulate our fellows who presented yesterday. I wanted to acknowledge our fellows today. You're going to do an amazing job. We're all so excited. I wanted to thank our mentors. Thank you for volunteering to lead our fellows and to assist with their various policy projects. Um, this is a volunteer role. All of you are very busy in your respective roles. So we really appreciate your time and your dedication to our fellows in addition to the Network for Social Work Management. Um, last, I would like to thank Rain and Dennis, our administrators for this program. Um, you both have done a fabulous job of leading and guiding our fellows throughout this process this entire year. Um, and I myself and everyone else at the network are so grateful for your many contributions. We'd also like to thank the New York Community Trust who has funded this program for many years. Without their support, this would not be possible. So thank you again for joining us on many of your day off. Again, we ask that you please, you know, tomorrow for Juneteenth, continue to educate yourself, but also as you reflect that you also celebrate where we are today. So with that, congratulations to everyone. Um, and I'd like to turn it over to Dennis Boyd, our co-administrator. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Dr. Cherry. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, glad to have you. If you were here yesterday and you had the opportunity to see the fabulous presentations, type down some thoughts in the chat. Great, awesome, loved it. Uh, you, could, you could put those in the chat. That'll be really great. Um, we are really happy to have you here with us this morning. Um, just a few things to get us started. So first off, we have a cadence that we're working to keep so that each fellow has a block of time. And we want to make sure that we're beginning with their start time in the event that they have family, friends, loved ones, colleagues who are going to be joining so that they don't miss their presentation. And this came as a result of one of the things that we learned from last year's fellow presentation. The second thing is if you have questions, please feel free to place those in the Q&A, which you can find on the bottom of your screen, slight left of center. And if you have comments that you wanna share with the presenters, please place those in the chat. So we need the questions in the Q&A and the comments in the chat. This will help us field questions more efficiently. So as we get ready to move on, the next voice that you're going to hear and the next face that you will see will be that of none other than Silas Kelly. Silas, you're up. Hello everyone, my name is Silas W. Kelly. I'm a licensed master social worker and an e-journalism social work advocate. I welcome you all to this documentary entitled, Raise the Wage, the case for equitable pay for social workers and other human service professionals. This is very important because as goes social work, so goes human services. In this documentary, you'll hear brief statements from knowledgeable social work experts on the importance and the impact of the social work profession. This will serve as a pilot for an upcoming series on this topic. This documentary is very special to me because I was able to reconnect with my former social worker who, when I was between the ages of 16 and 17, had a huge impact on my life, which I still remember to this day. Mr. Murchison, hello. Hi, hi, Silas. How you doing, sir? I'm doing very well for a long time. <laughs> it's good to see you. So I'm, I'm, I'm so happy that you were able to, you know, help me put together this documentary. I really appreciate it. Um, I talk about you all the time, you know, whenever I give a speech, you know, I do a lot of public speaking to the, you know, students that are studying social work now. And I did so when I was studying for my uh, master's degree. And I always tell the story about the social worker that made an impact on me. And it's always Dalton Murchison. And I remember that when I first decided to go away to school, my first foray, my social worker, his name was Dalton Murchison. In my senior year, and I had to go up to Cobble Skill for my weekend visit to see if I wanted to go to that school. And you, Mr. Murchison, you came to my house and you picked me up, drove me all the way up to Cobleskill 
dropped me off, gave me spending money and a bus ticket back home. And the coolest thing that I remember is I remember you saying, because you talked to some of the people that were running the all orientation, they gave you a little rundown, and you turned to me, you said, well, seems like after you finish all your orientation, you still have some time for some finger popping. <laughs> I remember that. Those are the types of things that I remember. Our next guest contributed to this documentary from NASW headquarters in Washington, D.C. Today we have a very special guest with us, and I'm very honored and thrilled to have with us Dr. Mildred C. Joyner. Uh, she's a doctor of professional studies and also MSW and a licensed clinical social worker. But more importantly than all of that, in my opinion, she is the president of the National Association of Social Workers. Welcome to this very special uh, recording, Dr. Joyner. Thank you, Mr. Kelly. I'm so, so um, honored to be your guest and I'm looking thank forward to this uh, thank you. time together thank you. and thank you for inviting me can you just highlight for our viewers and listeners the the breadth and depth of social work and social workers in all the different areas that we um that we perform and work in well you know social workers are everywhere and, and my favorite line is if you live long enough you will access a social worker um, so social workers are in the helping profession, as we know, but they also are presidents of colleges. They also um, are in the public sector. They work at the NFL. They work at the NBA. So anywhere there are people, there are usually a social worker. Uh, some don't always use their term social worker they'll use another term mm -hmm. um and because we are a profession where i said everyone does not utilize their acronyms mm -hmm. you know sometimes people will take what they learn and then all of a sudden they'll be the the president of a college and you'll never hear that they were a social worker next you'll hear from the educator and innovator who served as my mentor and advisor for this project I'd like to welcome um to this presentation uh, Dr. Catherine Breyer Lawson. She's a uh, professor and dean emeritus of the Albany State University School of Social Welfare. Welcome to this presentation, Dr. Breyer Lawson. I'm honored to be here. Thank you. The first thing I, I'd like you to talk about is in, in your book, Charting the Impacts of, uh, of University Child Welfare Collaborations, you mentioned the process of preparing and maintaining a highly skilled competent workforce of social workers. Can you explain the significance of that? Thank you for asking. Our child welfare families, including their children, often involve some of the most complex and challenging um, issues, concerns, behaviors, traumas, life histories and needs. And so given how challenging and high need and high promise our child welfare families are, we need to have a profession serving them that's up to speed. At this time, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Dr. Tracy Robinson Whitaker, DSW, currently serving as Associate Professor and Associate Dean for Academic and Student Advancement in the School of Social Work at Howard University. Dr. Whitaker elaborates on the importance of social workers in child welfare. I'd like to bring to viewers' attention the importance of the value of social workers in the field of child welfare. The child welfare area is where we can see the most immediate impact of our services. And I think it's so important, um, primarily because of the vulnerability of the children and the families that we serve. And our job, even when we have to bring a child into the system, is to minimize more trauma to that child. When social workers go above and beyond while getting involved in the life of teenage children, the impact on that individual is lifelong. I remember when I was 16 years old and, you know, I, I was 16. I made a mistake. I got in some trouble. I did. And I had to go to court. Mr. and Mrs. Cox was there. My minister was there. And Mr. Dalton Murchison, my social worker, was there in court. And I remember standing in front of the judge, and you might well remember the words that he said. He said, 
Well, Silas, you know, you, you did make a mistake. He said, but with such a strong support system with your parents and your minister and Mr. Dalton Murchison, my social worker was there. He says, it's obvious that you have people that care about you. So I'm going to sentence you to probation. And I remember him saying that because of all the people that were in my life that cared about me. I really, really was emotionally impressed with that because that meant a lot to me. In order to achieve our overarching goal of equitable compensation, we as a profession need to state our case, highlighting our impact and identifying our needs. Our next guest talks about doing exactly that at the highest levels of government. It is my distinct honor and pleasure to introduce and welcome Ms. Sarah Butts, she's an LCSW and she is the Director of Public Policy at the National Association of Social Workers main headquarters down in Washington, D.C. Ms. Butts, thank you so much for joining us in this very, very important uh, documentary feature. Thank you for having me. So we're going we're gonna to get right into the, the heart of the matter. And what I want to do is just give you a chance um, as a key member of NASW to talk about what NASW is doing to help us to to, to elevate our status. So um, I want to start by asking you about the NESW's 2021 Blueprint for Federal Social Policy Priorities document. Tell our listeners a little bit about that. So the National Association of Social Workers uh, released this uh, blueprint, which is 40 plus pages of recommendations that are actionable. Uh, the, the kind of um, audience for this actual document are the new administration, the Biden-Harris administration and the 117th Congress. There are a total of 21 issue areas covered in the blueprint uh, that really encompass our workforce advocacy for social workers and also those social justice priorities that benefit our clients in society. Um, the blueprint's organized using the Grand Challenges for Social Work, which is a research-informed social policy agenda that the profession developed and that I served as the first executive director of that initiative. And so this is really a, um, I think, a foundational document that organizes the profession that we can get um, together and try to make progress in this Congress for over the next four years. NASW President Dr. Joyner agrees that it's important that we as social workers identify ourselves as such and also that we are represented at every table where decisions are being made about social workers and their salaries. If someone rises up to a CEO and they have a social work degree, they should say that they're an executive exactly, director who's a exactly. social worker. Right. And, 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 and if they were to do that more, do you think that would change the perception in the public side? Because they see an executive director or CEO and they kind of know or they kind of figure they're making, you know, high 90s, maybe six figures. But they don't equate that with someone that has a social work degree. Right. I mean, NASW and CSWE were trying to, to get a workforce study, and it's really hard to get the, the real data. Mm -hmm. uh, there are social workers who are CEOs. And, yes. you know, I, I love the fact that the Biden administration has hired some social workers. All of them are heading departments. And I think we need more lobbying around what we do. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, even in the last bill that was for the stimulus bill, the schools were told to have more social workers and I and we advocate, okay, but you, you need to say how much they should get paid, right? Mm. Uh, so we have to understand that in order to bring up that, you have to have people at the table for policy. Yes. Like, so what's the bottom line that you're going to pay for social workers being there, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and so that's why we need social workers on the micro, meso, and the macro level of practice. We have to start recruiting the next generation of social workers now. Here's an innovative way that that's being done at this very moment. Listen to hear how one social work educator is doing this. Today, it's my honor to introduce um, Dr. Lois Stein, the founder and the originator of the program, the new program at the uh, LIU Brentwood campus. Um, the first BSW class uh, was started under her tutelage and under her direction. Welcome, Dr. Stein. Thank you, Silas. While you were at L LIU Brentwood, um, you started a really exciting program, taking the whole concept of a career in social work into the high schools. Uh, how did they receive it initially? At first, mm -hmm. I went in a few times to assemblies and met with the students to talk about what the curriculum looked like. They were going to be learning about advocacy. They were going to be learning a little bit about 
social work practice, both on a micro level, working individual with individuals and families, and on a macro level, working with more policy and organization. They ended up enrolling. Wow. So it definitely showed there was a core of students that were interested. Our social work profession can never stop promoting the good that we do. Compensation for social workers must be equivalent to the impact that we have. Lastly, Mr. Murchison closes us out by reminding us to never lose sight of the true reward we gain, which is seeing the positive results of our efforts. Silas, your story, I'm telling you, there's no doubt, Silas, that you went into the right profession. And I tell you, as you're talking and telling me things that this is the piece that I remember, lots of stuff I forgot. I was involved with many, many families and children. And I'm getting my reward right now. I'm almost tearing <laughs> this is the faith. Praying and believing without doubt. You're rewarded just the way you're rewarding me right now. But you make it all worthwhile. And with that said, uh, many people helped make this possible. And as their names roll up on the screen, I'd like to start by thanking Dr. Catherine Brian Lawson, uh, my mentor, uh, advisor. I can't thank you enough, Dr. Lawson, Brian Lawson, and also all the other folks that made this possible. But most importantly, I'd th like to thank the network, Lakia, Dennis, Rain, you guys did a phenomenal job helping us to get through some really rough patches. And I appreciate all the other fellows and congratulations for all the fine work that you've all done. And thank you all for letting me be a part of this really great project. And Silas, before you take questions, it looks like Dr. Barry Lawson is on the line with us. Okay. I'm so moved as I hope you all are, in fact, brought to tears because not only has Silas shared with you all the epic soul that he is, but also the ideal social worker he represents. Very few social workers combine all their multi-level skills <clears throat> with broadcasting and media skills. So it's not enough for us just to do good. We've gotta be able to tell that story. And as he does, advancing as he does, the notion that social workers are life-saving, life-extending, his reconnection to Mr. Murchison and the sensitive, beautiful, moving way in which Mr. Murchison and his daughter all help with this reconnecting is a reminder that it's never too late for social workers in their lifespan to reap the rewards of those whose lives they've changed, as Silas does every day, as Mr. Murchison did. And now when we think about the due diligence that Silas has put into this and imagine the future documentary that will come out of this since he's so limited in time today, we have to remember that he, he not only epitomizes the best of us, but is an award-winning celebrated social worker who this afternoon and tonight will receive Social Worker of the Year Award from the Nassau Suffolk um, chapter of the NASW uh, Social Work Association. So this is a celebrated, beloved, honored, treasured uh, social work leader. And to Mr. Murchison, his daughter, we thank you for extending the gifts that social work offers and Silas for advancing it collectively for all of us. We celebrate you. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is Silas, your e-journalism social work advocate and host of the show. You've been listening to the Kelson on the Air Social Work Podcast.
This and all other programs are available on the Apple iTunes, SoundCloud, Spotify, and Anchor podcast platforms. Go to any search engine and type in Kelson on the air in the search window to hear this show in its entirety. Thank you for tuning in. This has been a Kelson Communications production.